there are three levels of complexity to me. The super easy, where it's like because of our training or our experience as a composer, it doesn't take too much for us to compose something like this. Level one. Level two is like where you can do things, you know, maybe you don't have to write down the notes, but it's somehow a little bit more complex. And again, because of your level as a composer or whatever, you can do things that are a little bit more hard to do. That could be like the level two. And then level three is where it's very, very complex, where you're writing, you know, complex harmonies or complex textures where you will need to write things down. So example of super simple would be something like typical pulsing thing. It's not perfect, but I just wanna move fast. Complexity level one, it's not easy. And um, the heart here is in the creating the texture that works and the balance and the orchestrating part, that is important. And still at some point you, you may be like, it is complex for me, I don't know what's going on. In terms of orchestration, to me, orchestration comes a little bit more naturally. Complex or not that complex harmonic passages, that to me is more complicated, for example. To me, that means level two. We've got a melody and harmony and it's fairly fast and complex and there is music development. Then it's when it becomes a little bit more complex to me. For in terms of orchestration, no. Orchestration to me is just having fun. Maybe to use the other way around. This level of complexity number one, which everything happens in your head and you're able to record everything. If it's like 1.1, there are still a few things that you are like, ah, just write them down. So for example, like if you've got this, and you're like, okay, got this. If for you complexity means orchestration and you're gonna cool, you're gonna have the low strings here the entire way. You're gonna have the violence one coming in here. I'm gonna do the tore, 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 tore thing. And then this is gonna be ticket ticket ten ticket ticket ten. You don't even need to write the notes, just for you to remember. And then you're gonna have the horns here doing something like do kind of like a crescendo here towards the end. You can do things like this, right? Maybe you can have the omnisphere doing a pulsing thing, sing thing here, and then you're gonna have the taikos doing like zatarakaran, zatarataran, zatarat, so whatever, right? And just do the orchestration to me is the other way around. Where I'm going to struggle is more in the harmonic part of things. Just write down the chords. So for example, if we go back to to this melody. This is very simple, but let's say that sometimes I forgot what was the second chord. I just write them down. It's gonna be and with this everything becomes easy. We are still in one where everything can happen. I don't even have to look at the notes. I can listen and I'll hear what's going on harmonically. I'll be able to see the different uh, layers and I can hear the orchestration, but I need a little bit, just a little bit of help with this guy here. Again, for you may be different. For you, you need help here. And you're like, okay, what do I have? We've got the piano here. Do, do, di, do, di, do. And then you're like, I don't know what's next, but maybe let me see, let me see. And then you're gonna go here and like, okay, maybe you can have the strings. Kind of like low meter strings here, right? It just adds a little bit of expressivity to this phrase while, you know, keeping these velocities, this weight of each note consistent. And um, what I've done a little bit is I've created a little bit of a space for double basses pizzicato. These notes, in case you're wondering why they are here, kind of like up an octave, being the double basses, they should go down an octave, but it, they already sound down an octave, that's why I kept them there. But now at this point, we, you're like, okay, what's going on harmonically or in terms of orchestration? Well, we've got dunk dunk dunk, and then we've got the down an octave here, the double basses, dunk 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 dunk. All right, so 
what may happen is that you start adding things and then you're gonna start creating conflicts, these small little conflicts that start messing up, making your music sound muddy. And you're like, it's subtle and you don't realize because you don't see the different elements and what registers and if there's any conflict going on. This for you, maybe is the same that for me is having this chord here and not having to remember when I'm orchestrating, it's like, what was the next chord? What was the next chord? Oh yeah, yeah, B flat, whatever, right? Let's just keep composing. Basically, we have the violas, don doubling these higher notes that the cellos are doing. Type of thing, that's what the violas are doing. And maybe we can have them doubled with the celeste up here. So basically now here, we have this motif here, which is the violas, right? It's doubled up to three octaves with the celesta. So it's the same motif. At the end, this is slightly different. They just have the cellos, the violas, and the celesta. And I know what I was doing when I did this, but if for you it is complicated, then come back here and see what you've got in terms of note. But what I'm saying is just do something super simple, like something like to me super simple is, you know, I'm not gonna write the chords, like, you know, do, me, you know, I'm not gonna write the chord or whatever. I'm just gonna write it here. At this point, just finishing it up. This kind of introducing the motif of the piolas and the celesta towards the end and then going with it. It's very simple, but what allows me to write like this is to, you know, to be able to check out the chords real quick and then like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do next. It comes easy. So what we have, we've got the arp in here, right? You've got don, tro, di, tro, di, do, which is up here for the melody. You've got the arp doing his things, do, di, do, da, do, da, di, de, do, di, do, here in the mid register is the arp. And then we've got don, con, tin, ton, ton, con, tin, ton, in this register, the lower strings. We've got the violas doubling here with a little bit of here, conflict with the arp, but it's everything it's under control because um, this counterpoint area it's where the higher parts of the ton con tinton, ton con tinton are, where the violas and the arp are having fun and playing around with the melodies. This part is what became the motif that the violas take, and then ding, 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 became kind of like the second motivic element. Maybe we could have something like to compensate. A little bit too much, but um, I would bring it down. They're in the higher register. It's not conflicting, plus it's just long notes, it's background stuff. Let's move to the level two of complexity. Now music starts getting a little bit more complex. We're gonna compose something for you short maybe four bars and we're gonna rely on the sequencer we're gonna use the sequencer so we can see all the things that we need to see the same way that we would see them in a score editor right when we are score editor we start we've got the idea and we're like i'm gonna copy paste this because we're gonna double this i'm gonna tell it with the double basses and i'm gonna have the violas here i'm gonna double the violas with the english horns i'm gonna have this melody here up here with the strings violins one two in octaves gonna have the oboes and flutes doubling and at some point you may forget what you did like 20 minutes ago, but still you can see it in the score. And so that gives us a frame of reference of what to build next, because we can see it in the score and we can see not just listening it in the playback, but also seeing in the score and see where are the conflicts or the things that we shouldn't do or things that we could do. How can we use the sequencer in a way that gives us the ability to visually see what's going on? Because usually the way it looks is more like this, not very helpful. I'm not gonna reveal exactly how to do it. I'm gonna do it and you'll see. I'm gonna start using the sequencer in a way that gives me the ability to see the notes, to see what's going on as I'm building everything. The idea is to start with something that's complex and how to evolve and what do I need. And I would like for you to see it. So let's start with... I'm gonna 
have the double bass staccato. Just recorded this region here. The trick is that I'm working with two regions or three regions, whatever. Then I select both of them, double click, and up here in Cubase and with Logic, you can do the same thing. I can select which one I wanna work with. So I'm gonna work now with the double basses while I still see what's going on here. Because I'm gonna write music based on what we've got here. So we've got this motif, taka taka tan, taka taka tan, that repeats every time. But then we've got this zaka taka taka taka, taka 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 taka, that moves. And I can't remember the notes, but if it was something a little bit longer, it would maybe be confusing at some point. So I like to be able to see this is a D, this is a E sharp or E flat, because now what I'm gonna do is I'll do D and I'll just go up, down, up, up, down, and D, and then take it like a dun 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 dun, take it like a dun 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 type of thing. Just creating a little bit of dissonance here. Now, what the cellos and the double basses are doing, it seems in the same register because this patch sounds down an octave. So I'm, I'm gonna record some violins. I'm gonna go with CSS violins one legato. This is the marcato legato with the spiccato overlay. So that gives me a lot of control for fast, energetic legato lines. Before I record this, I'm gonna record the key switch here. I'm gonna go here, and now I'm gonna, again, I wanna see the three of them. And I wanna select the violin one legato. When recording something like this, that is a little bit more complex, I'm doing things bit by bit. Maybe this motif, I could have recorded it in one take, but it took me, it recorded first the going up, and then repetition. So that's what I recommend. So as I'm hearing this, I can hear this kind of like counter, no, it's not a counter melody, but the melody coming in. But I don't know what else is gonna continue after this. So I'm gonna record it, this first part, which I think it worked for me. I think it's gonna do And then before this, I wanna have something like that resolve. At some point, I'm gonna double this with violins too, to soften this a little bit and thicken it. When we're talking about this second level of complexity, we're talking about things that would be very easy to write in a score editor because just input the notes, that's it. And here's a little bit more complicated. So complexity in the level of musical complexity, but also performing complexity is hard. What I'm trying to show here is two things, seeing the picture so you can continue drawing based on what you've already painted and also recording bit by bit, doing it in a way that allows you to, you know, record something that's, you know, if you inputted the notes, it would be easy, but recording it like this takes a a bit longer, set up your sequencer in a way that allows you to record bit by bit. I'm gonna re-record the entire dynamics now that the nodes are there. And a transition to short notes in this track that I've got selected. I could go from here to here. But I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna have another track because I like having the short notes in a second track so I have them routed different. I'm gonna use this motif and I'm gonna just repeat it. And then I'm gonna repeat this one. And the way we are doing this is very important to understand that it's important for me to see the notes so I can remember the motives and I can develop them. recorded this. I'm gonna double the violins one with the violins two. You could do violas just uh, to finish it up with the strings. I'm gonna improve this a little bit in one sec. The melody up here, it's not conflicting with anything. There are some dissonances, it's okay. They are relatively well resolved and uh, for the style it works perfectly well. And then this melody continues here with the staccatos up here, continues here, here, here. Then we've got the other big motivic statement, Then we've got a little bit of fill with the violas here in the middle. 
and uh, to make it not boring we moved them a little bit but essentially it's in that f sharp zone right below the lowest note in the violins range then we've got the cellos doing and then down an octave even though it seems it's overlapped we've got the double basses doing the exact same pedal kind of thing that the cellos are doing but adding a little bit of movement to make it less boring or to add a little bit of thickness or dissonance now with all this we've got more than enough layers and more than enough motives more than enough things to start really orchestrating this we have the horns doing just like a rip here with the cellos we can easily know what woodwinds would be doubling the violins and violas we would have the percussion here but now we can see all these things and it's not gonna just composing based on what i hear nothing more and more and more stuff because the typical problem uh when you know for beginners is we start composing right and then we just start having fun it's like this sounds good let's just add more things more things more things and at some point there's too many layers too many conflicting layers that are not helping the main idea at least we can see here what's the most important part and they start doubling and enhancing that part based on what we see not just what we hear it just gives us a little bit more of control